to Good Morning Madness. We are rocking and rolling uh, here today. We have uh, all four of us. We're getting them into the feed here, so we might have a little bit of a technical delay um, getting all of our cameras up. But just wanted to say thank you and good morning. Welcome to Good Morning Madness. My name is Travis Lochner. Uh, we're setting this live, setting this up live from across the country. I'm here in Colorado, and we've got three awesome people with me here today. Uh, one of our, the first things I want to go over uh, briefly before we bring our guests in is just giving you an outline of this show. And what we're going to be doing today is giving you a really bunch, a bunch of clear options for your career and leveling up. And what we're realizing is the old school one career, one company thing is not a super feasible strategy in the long run. So we're going to explore all the topics. We've got a really diverse crew here to throw at you. And uh, just, yeah, wanted to give you guys the thank you for spending your time with us as we build out this community. I know so many of you have been a huge part of this. Um, and I would also like to call out any of the lingerers here in the chat. Uh, we do have a lot of uh, recurring guests, but would love to see anybody that's here in the chat. Please just drop any type of hello, drop some pineapples, some sunglasses, anything so that we know you're here in the mix. Um, a lot of the times it's been invisible, um, but we know a lot of you are here and we want to appreciate you. So without further ado, let me go ahead and pull in our guests who are going to be cracking open this conversation. From New York, we've got our New LinkedIn York. top voice of 2019. Oh, stop. Sam Downs what in the up? building. Thank you so much, Sam. Uh, Thanks for having me, as your, always. Your voice. Um, next up, we've got our man from Texas. He knows sales like the back of his hand, and he doesn't even realize he's doing it. Um, <laughs> you guys, you guys love him as the crowd favorite here. Justin J. Ray Reynolds in the yeah! building. Ha! Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> had, to, had to go with it. Like, if I'm from Texas. Oh, right. boy. And the man of the hour. Last but certainly not least, our video marketing maverick of Miami. Rico Suave. Balmar. <laughs> I, I want you to change it like live. I'm requesting you change it to the Monday Morning Messiah. Monday I feel like Morning Messiah. <laughs> I mean, that's, life, that's, 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 Travis, how about? This has actually been a, a thing. I think people have kind of called you the the Jesus of LinkedIn, and we're uh, we're glad LinkedIn to have Jesus. you here, man. <laughs> Listen, but, I want I want salvation, so I'm not going to take the Jesus moniker. I, yeah. I, we can kind of play with, but not not Jesus over here. So deal. Deal. We'll definitely keep that open. Um, so thank you to everybody that's joining us here today. Uh, if you've absorbed any portion of value from any of these guys, please go ahead and subscribe, hit like, any of the, all that fun stuff I'm supposed to say and do. Um, I always forget to do it. So <laughs> please go ahead and do it. Love the channel. Uh, we're building out a home for influencers, content creators, uh, anybody that needs to unleash their creative energy. You are welcome here. So uh, we appreciate you today. And uh, what we're going to do is actually unpack the story of these three brilliant, brilliant people here in the room because um, they're in a really interesting spot of managing traditional careers, a little bit of side hustle action, a little bit of entrepreneurship action, and they're all killing it uh, in different ways and different unique ways. So that's where I really want to unpack each of these guys' stories and start to give you guys options to consider moving forward um, and really stabilizing your career, your life, uh, and everything in that realm. So what we're going to do is just kind of give each of these guys a little mini interview and crack open their story and give them a chance to share what exactly they do. We absorb a little bit, uh, stalking them online and reading their headlines, but this is going to be a really interesting way to See, hear a little bit more from them. So, Sam, I would love to hear from you first, because um, this is uh, you've been in a really tr transitioning role for a while here um, and would love to just kind of give you the floor for what exactly has been your 
story and path so far before you jump into entrepreneurship. Um, and then we can kind of just crack open things from there to see what your a normal day looks like in your life, if that is a thing. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, so yeah, I've been, when I started, let me just rewind a little bit. Um, I actually was going to college for uh, a few, like a year and a half. I was like, mind you, 15 when I dropped out of high school, got my GED. Um, then I like enrolled in college. I was like turned 16 then. Um, we was going to go the traditional route. Um, had no idea what I was interested in, but I knew that like I love people for some reason. I knew like, I kind of wanted to help people and I just didn't know how I was going to do that. Um, now, obviously, like for me, I hate linguistic learning. I just don't learn like that. I'm very ADD, hypertension, um, dyslexic. So it was really hard for me to to follow that route. Um, so I ended up dropping out of college and then I just enrolled in, or I just uh, started my career. I started at, um, you know, retail sales and then I worked my way up, uh, did some car sales, did uh, some phone sales, insurance sales. Then I got into the telecom industry. But it was funny because I was never at a job for longer than a year and a half. Um, why is that? Because I, I really necessarily wouldn't get bored. But I was just like, what is the next step for me? And I looked around and I saw like if I couldn't grow within that organization or if I really didn't see myself believing in the organization, then I was out. Like I just I, I didn't have any I felt like I was still young and that the time was now to get cracking, get moving. Um, so don't look down on people that have like short gaps in their resume or that only have been at work for a, long, or a short period of time. Um, and then I started my last job I was at for about a year and a half. Um, I started growing my side hustle. I started creating content on LinkedIn and that's where it kind of the light bulbs came off. And I'm like, you know, this is, I love to do this. I love to, you know, cold call and to build relationships and use LinkedIn as prospecting. Um, and I was getting really good at it. So I was like, I just want to start doing this for other people. Um, and that's kind of how it snowballed. And here I am, I quit my corporate job pre-COVID. And of course, when this shit <laughs> yep. happened, you're like, oh yep. my God, like, what am I going to do? I'm an idiot. Why did I do that? Um, but things started moving along and here I am now. So it's been, it's been a journey. <laughs> mm, brilliant. Uh, no, I love hearing that, uh, being able to kind of connect the dots. Um, I started doing my, my LinkedIn stalking version when you were kind of in that transition, um, starting your agency. So it's been interesting to follow and watch you grow. Um, Thank you. So I, I, congratulations on the transition and Thank the leap you. and the jump. I know everything that you have to do psychologically to get there. Um, mm. So uh, definitely appreciate you were able to do that so young. Um, would love to hear now that you've made the leap, what exactly do you do on a normal day? Do you have uh, a normal day or a normal agenda that you uh, jump into? Or is it pretty much all across the board? <laughs> well, I try to make it very strict and schedule-like because I'll have a few clients and some are on the West Coast, some are on the East Coast. So it's easier for me to get into a routine of that. Um, and then uh, I just like basically I'll do all my content creation and stuff for them like at night. So I'm up from, you know, eight o'clock to seven o'clock or seven o'clock to eight o'clock. And then I go to sleep at like two in the morning or like one thirty in the morning, like working on content and, you know, trying to spend time with a husband as much as I can. Um, so it's, it's cool though, because like, I like having that time where I can work at night. Cause I feel like I work really good at that, those hours. Um, it's where the creative juices are flowing and I'm like almost like exhausted, but for some reason that's like where my creative juices are flowing. It's weird. I don't know. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Yeah. No, no, no. That makes sense. I mean, everybody starts to accommodate, um, working within your style. I know I've spoken with, uh, Rebecca here in the chat of determining if you're a morning person or a night person and uh, kind of adjusting your workflow. So that totally makes sense. Um, and would love to hear in the context of what pays the bills, what brings dollars in the door, do you have anything beyond your agency context or is this something where you're relying um, entirely on this agency where it's on all in thing where you really have got to get it going um, to whatever degree you're comfortable would love to hear kind of cracking open oh, of course, um, of course. different re revenue channels that you consider or are considering in mm -hmm. the future. 
Yeah. So um, right now is this is my agency is it. Um, I tried to have like on a consulting basis, like three months, like contracts. So like I can, you know, and they can see results too. They're not just going to try it out for a month and not see result. And then just, I haven't had that happen yet. So thankfully. Um, so I'll try to do, have my ducks in a row that way as well. And then I eventually like want to start like other side hustles too. I'm trying to like focus on this first primarily. Um, but I really think I want to dabble in some other things. Um, I have some great ideas for products like household and, and kid products that I want to like get into the market. But then again, I have to invest all my time in that. So I'm trying to like figure it out first and then um, eventually do it. But I know I have to do it soon because mm. time's ticking, you know? Of course. So. No, brilliant. I appreciate that so much. Um, and Willie, yeah, we can crack open some of those uh, potential things here in, in our next section. Uh, but I would love to switch over and hear from Justin here as well. Um, would love to open the floor and give you kind of the same same outline. Would love to hear your version, the, the short version, I guess, that we can of, of yeah. your story, what, what got you to here, um, and really uh now that we've seen you take this leap into linkedin it's just been so damn impressive um and then what makes it even more impressive is understanding your background and understanding like you really had no idea what the hell you were doing coming into this and i think that's going to be so awesome for people to understand like you don't have to be some video marketing guru or tech guy to like jump into this um you can jump into this with your own personality and your own expertise uh, and i'd love to just give you the floor to share your version of your story and what what's kind of brought you here so far we may have lost justin on yeah. a technical difficulties you there? <laughs> the internet connection in houston is apparently not functioning um <laughs> We're going to briefly switch over to Jonathan for now until uh, our man, Victor, whom we appreciate very deeply, can Thank you. Uh, pull Justin back on. Um, but Jonathan uh, has got some good internet in Miami, so let's hop into his story. Um, John, I, you have such an equally impressive story of coming from the world of forensics and accounting and all this stuff you would not expect to be video content linkedin like associated at all um and then little pieces in uh, along the way of it, it, the world of entertainment and fashion and stuff so would love to open this open the table and give you a chance to just share your story with our audience here and um how how have you ended up in this spot where you're at right now yeah so <clears throat> today's like a perfect example of what my life is like right now like Purposely not wearing my glasses. I want to just kind of like expose myself a little bit for the sake of the story. But literally last night I slept for 30 minutes. I got 30 minutes of sleep in. And I'd say like on average right now I'm sleeping about three to three and a half hours a night. And it's because I recognize the fact that, you know, we have a great opportunity right now to take advantage of a platform during COVID-19, during the, a time when a lot of people are at home, when digital marketing is a big deal, when we can do things like this and we can jump on a call, you know, midday and, and uh, we're all home and we can do this. But this is a luxury that we do not have forever. So I'm taking advantage of it now. You know, there is a part of me that it's a little bit of FOMO, you know, like fear of not taking an opportunity. You know, what am I potentially losing out on? So I feel like I'm just trying to do everything right now to, you know, escalate things so that at some point, you know, getting to the end of the rainbow, which doesn't happen for any of us, but the hope is that if I build enough momentum, at some somewhere down the line, I can rest. But uh, the reality is, I, I think that there's this perception that uh, social media uh, pays the bills or doing LinkedIn video marketing pays all the bills. I still make great money as a forensic accountant. So just for my family and, and, and for, you know, every, all my different endeavors, you know, it's, it's not beneficial to step away from, you know, what kind of does help in a big way to pay the bills, which is forensic accounting, um, and, and just go all in with video marketing. There are some very brave folks that, that can do that, and I'm just, I'm not in that position quite yet to just go all in. You know, God bless the people that do, but I just, I can't do that, you know? <laughs> But is I'm, I'm following my heart with the digital marketing, but at the same time, I'm, I'm, I'm staying set 
and I recognize the fact that I need to be logical, pay the bills, do the work that needs to be done. You're good at it anyways. You understand it anyways. And so it's just, uh, I wish I could say there was a balance, but there is zero balance. Like I haven't watched anything on Netflix in you know, eight or nine months. I, I have no idea. I Outside of this world, I have no idea what's going on. LinkedIn is probably <laughs> like, check my phone. I check my phone on Sundays. I'm sure all of you get that notification of like how long you've spent on your phone that week. And I was averaging 11 hours a day on LinkedIn. And that was like an eye opener. I was like, wow, like this is a major investment. But the hope is that in the long run, it pays off. Bro. Oh, I do not yeah. need to know how many hours I spend on, I know. on that. I know. I'm I've ruined, uh, uh, when I was in my gaming days, they added like a slashed played feature um, to one of the games I played. And I had realized I had literally spent over a year of time played on the game. Not like a year wow. since I created the account. Like a year of human life existing <laughs> on the game. Um, so I wouldn't even want to know what that would be on my phone. Um, but that's whack. Um, appreciate you, yeah, cracking that open. Uh, yeah, I've, I've <laughs> I was definitely not ex expecting um, that type of number uh, for, but I'd be curious to hear, yeah, other people's um, if I did see that. Um, you mentioned jumping into this these alternative streams of income, paying for taking care of your family. That's like a huge, huge, huge piece of this puzzle for me as well, um, and most people that have monetary and financial goals. It's not. I want to take over the world or start Amazon. Like it's, I want to take care of the people I love and do it well. Um, and you seem to be on, on a pretty damn good route of that. Um, I would love to crack open to whatever degree, again, you're comfortable of what different ways do you bring revenue in the door and take care of yourself and the people you love? Well, I, I've, I've gotten lucky, you know, like as a kid, I was really good at saving money, you know, um, so that's really helped me. I, I bought a couple of properties when I was a little bit younger and I was able to flip them. So um, I've turned them into Airbnbs. But, you know, of course, with everything going on right now, we got to awesome. rent, this, you know, so forget it. But yeah. Um, yeah, so then that's that's kind of like other ways that I, I'm, I'm, you know, developing revenue. But, uh, you know, that's what's super interesting is that, you know, once you get some of those things out of the way, it's like, of course, like the finances are super important, but what I love about the digital marketing is it's allowed me to kind of like take that creative spirit, take that side of me that 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 wants and feels like it needs attention and really go in all in on that. Because, you know, while the financial side of it is great and awesome and we love it, it's like I think all of us want to feel loved. We all want to feel important. I, that's that's the appeal of social media is that mm -hmm. we can all find people similar to us or that have you know, like-minded beliefs as us, like sometimes the real world sucks. A place like LinkedIn where your reputation's on the line every day, you can be surrounded by a group of people that will empower you, that will make you feel good about yourself. It, 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 I almost find like LinkedIn is like full of, you know, type A personalities, you know, alphas, people that are, you know, go-getters, action takers, that LinkedIn's full of that. So to be mm -hmm. surrounded with so many people that are delusional like myself, nothing like it. I love it. Yes, I am 100% with you. have absolutely noticed that in the LinkedIn world. Um, and appreciate you sharing that with us, man. I think uh, we've got Justin is back in action. He's back <laughs> alive in our studio. He just had to run out real quick. Uh, yeah. It's all good. Uh, <laughs> so, Justin, thank you so much. Um, we appreciate having you here, man. It's just so fun to have you in the room all the time. Appreciate everything you do. Um, and, yeah, we were it, pretty close to giving you the floor to share your story before a little hiccup. But um, let's go ahead and jump back into that and would love to hear your story and what brought you to here in this point of your career so far, because it seems like it's been an adventure. <laughs> it, it, it's been completely an adventure, and, I, and I'm sorry if I lose you. I don't know what's going on with my internet today, and I don't know if it's my phone, I don't know if it's the area or what, but All good, man. Um, it's been an amazing little run. It, it's been an amazing run of just... LinkedIn, I don't know what I'm doing. Still don't know what I'm doing. Like, it just went from me trying to fit the LinkedIn mold to me 
all of a sudden being myself, and that's when traction started happening. Can y'all see me clearly? Because I keep yeah. seeing me in and out of the screen, so I want to make sure uh, everything everything in the screen screen is bigger than it appears. I promise you. Hold on, <laughs> yeah. I, I keep shrinking. Yeah. Uh, the audio, yeah, the go. audio is fine. Uh, you're good, man. Don't worry about the tech. Okay, side. good. Um, but you know, from from the LinkedIn perspective, I still don't know what I'm doing, and so that's sort of just the reason I started LinkedIn. I've been in real estate for several several years, and I st but because of real estate and my connection with realtors, I've been having the opportunity to, uh, I started a roofing business because where we live in North Texas, there's hail every year. So we need a roof every couple of years. Um, and I'm like, man, why am I missing out the opportunity of having a roofing company? And so we, we started the roof. However, listening to Gary V and listening to all the guys talking about content, growing your business, I figured out why was I doing social media? Because we were getting referrals. We did 112 roofs last year, residential, but only wow. three commercial roofs. And I knew with the commercial side of things, I needed to have more business people and my connections, not just realtors. So I started doing the, uh, the LinkedIn videos and the content and, and y'all know me, it's sell without selling. So I want people to ask what I do for a living and then I'll tell people what I do for a living. But that's now led to, since we started this morning thing, I had six contracts originally, but now we're up to 10 contracts, wow. commercial roofing contracts, just because of LinkedIn. And Good so job. it's, uh, it's, thank you, thank you. It's been a, it's been a whirlwind of adventure, but I think I want to retire, quote unquote, from real estate because the weekends, I can't work every single weekend mm -hmm. and roofing gives me the ability to not have to work every weekend. And so uh, that's why I'm putting the pedal to the metal with the uh, LinkedIn content. Wow. You were no, doing mortgages, is, right? Too, if I'm, if, um, sorry. No, no, no. So Victor, Victor was, no, Victor was doing mortgage. I just do, I do new home sales. So I sit in a mall home oh, okay. and I let clients come to me and I sell within the community. Very cool. Sorry to make cut you off, Travis. No, no worries. <laughs> You're uh, good. This was just a, a, a prime example. Um, thank you to everybody rolling with our, our technical difficulties. Um, <laughs> Victor is managing those like a boss on the back yes. end, though. Um, but essentially, uh, Justin's story is just so brilliant because he comes from a world that you would never expect the value of LinkedIn. Like, Because I'm mm. sure nine out of ten guys, if you had this conversation with them, you need to get on LinkedIn. You need to make content. You need to, <laughs> you need to build your personal brand. Uh, somebody in Justin's situation would look at you like you're crazy. Yep. They'd be like, what in the hell are you talking about? Um, yep. And I just know so many people like like that that I wish I could like show them the light. Um, so it's so brilliant to have you in the mix here um, and be, be watch, watching you grow from year to year. And uh, this is going to be, I think, yeah, a huge year as you discover this, everything that we can do on the side. Um, something here that Varlene just mentioned, having multiple revenue streams is no longer a luxury. It's a need. Mm -hmm. And this is huge. This is what we're talking about here today of it is no longer stable to rely on a single company, a pension, mm -hmm. like a pension isn't going to be a conversation we have anymore. Um, and who Social knows Security it'll even be there. It's not going to be a thing anymore. Um, so this is where the libertarian inside of me of like, take care of your own shit, like comes into play uh, the entrepreneurial side. Um, I would love to crack open your guys's perspective on side hustles entrepreneurship and the basically the whole premise of when you want to get a project going on the side is it better to start it as a side hustle and kind of dip your toes in the water or are you the type of person that's just gonna jump and go all in and uh treat it like a startup essentially and uh actually dive into the details so i'd love to just hear from you guys one uh, one by one sam maybe you first um up there on top um, would love to hear which, which side of the, the table are you on? Uh, do you like to, to dip your toes in the water? Or are you, you diving in from the high board? So I <laughs> want to say dip your toes in first, but, um, however, I did kind of just go all in. Um, let me kind of backpedal a little bit because number one, when you're building a side hustle, um, you know, and if you have a family at home, you have mortgage, you have car payments and you have bills, you know, you have people relying on you. Um, and if you're not some like trophy housewife, which I 
I wish I was, but I'm not. Um, <laughs> so, like, you, can't, you have to rely on you know, your income. So, like, starting it as a side hustle is very um, wise to start doing that. And then once you start getting clients, and if you have a few months of bills, uh, you know, pay, uh, bills, bill money saved up um, and some savings, then you can go all in. Um, and make sure that you have some clients to back you up if anything were to go awry. Um, however, this is kind of embarrassing, but when I jumped all in, um, I did have a few con clients that were not on contract base. Um, and then obviously when COVID hit, it, crickets from them, um, and rightfully so. However, some did stick by me, but it was very uh, few and far between. Um, but now when... I didn't have any contracts. I had a lot of proposals out, like when I put my resignation in, but not affirmatives. And then this happened and um, crickets from them. So like on the, my type of services are the first to go. So um, my husband was freaking out on me. What are we going to do? You know, you kind of messed up here. He prom I promised to tell him like if I wouldn't, uh, you know, have resignation if I didn't have everything backing me up and I didn't. Um, wow. so that for me was my number one lesson in this is to make sure that you have a security and a blanket behind you, but it ended up working out anyway, but to be, uh, to, to, to hold that stress in and to, you know, not cause tension sure. in the household, that would have been nice, but yeah. No, huge. That's a huge piece of this puzzle. I think people need to recognize is a lot of the time it's glorified. You see, uh, mm -hmm. especially in this last kind of Silicon Valley tech startup era of, all these stories and Forbes interviews like, oh, I quit my six figure job and started a startup in a garage. And uh, right. a lot of it's the time, it's really you not that realistic. Saved. Dude, you, you had parents backing you up. Like I literally have nobody. I have no, I have no parents that no money. I don't come from money. So that's it. Like it's only me. But um, yeah, it's the, a lot of those people, they have things backing them up if things were to go awry. Into shit. So, yeah, huge uh, to keep that self awareness in mind, keep it in check. Um, and I think I uh, would love love to hear maybe from John. Let's see, are you the type of guy that's more of a dip your toes in the water, or would you prefer to just be all in, like I'm I'm going in to my next venture? What uh what side of the spectrum do you prefer? Even even when it comes to dating, like I have. To a little bit of monkey branching. Like, I can't <laughs> just completely disconnect from one and go to the next. There has to be like this transitional state. One <laughs> head towards the other, you know? Tarzan. Uh, sorry to say. But, anyways, when, you know, so similar to when it comes to careers, I think uh, I hate saying the word, but it's like it's the only word I can think of that actually relates to it. You have to be self aware, right? You have to know whether you're a leader or you're a follower. A lot of us want to believe that we're leaders and we have the capabilities of running a show like that, running a company, you know, but the reality is, is, is we, we're, we're not all those people. I think that one of the confusions is, is that maybe you're like, um, you're an innovator or you're very outspoken. You have a very outgoing personality that does not automatically mean or translate into being a great leader. It just means you're really good at speaking or convincing people, but it's okay <laughs> to still have somebody behind you that is the actual leader behind the whole thing. So basically the reason why I bring this up is when I started having a little bit of success on social media, I made the decision, okay, I, I know what I'm doing. People are following along. I'll just build my own program. I'll just figure it out myself. And the reality is, is it takes a ton of work. It takes a ton mm. of commitment. That's why we need guys like Travis. That's why we need guys like Victor, because I recognize the fact I'm a much better follower than I will ever be as a leader. So I think a part of it is you, you need to start recognizing who am I? Where do I actually fit in this, in this equation? And it's okay. You know, the reality is we do not, we can have a message of leadership without actually having to be the leader. You know, not all of us can be leaders. Obviously there needs to be a far less leaders and far more followers. And I am perfectly fine following. Mm. That's why you're in this room, John. I appreciate your insights so damn much. Uh, <laughs> I d w didn't even script that, and I was hoping we hit it, hit, hit that today. Um, so I'm glad that you mm -hmm. uh, jumped straight into it because that self-awareness is such a huge piece um, of this puzzle of discovering 
where you can fit in this world um, with skills and personality Shoot. and leadership, um, how you can kind of connect all the pieces of that puzzle. Mm. Um, so that you kind of mentioned this kind of naturally leads into a area of skill stacking. Um, and this is a huge piece of this puzzle as well with that monkey branching that you were mentioning, John, of a lot of the times you're not going to have this very clear transition jumping from one world to another. Other times it may be gradual transitions. And for me, I know those gradual transitions have been thanks mm -hmm. to skill stacking, learning relevant mm -hmm. new skills that amplify existing things I've already done. Um, and this is something uh, I would love to kind of hear from you, Justin, to see if there is anything you've been focusing on in kind of this transition from old school sales, like soft skills, into this world of technology and social media and video and all of that. I'd be curious to hear what skills uh, have you been learning and what do you think has been the most valuable skill thus well. far? You know, it's funny. It's it, the editing part of it. I never knew anything about editing mm. um, until 90 days ago. And that's been a crash <laughs> course of just, it's trial frustrating. And yeah, trial and error, trial and error, trial and error. However, you know, in mixing the old school with the new school, the, the thing is, when I was transitioning into going from more face-to-face -face relationship building into digital, I changed my personality, right? Like, and it wasn't working. It wasn't until I realized I could be the same person talking to a camera as I was the same person talking to a person. I'm still building relationships. You can still feel my relationship. You can still feel my personality being on camera. You don't have to change anything. It was more realizing like, hey, you have a skill set and you can be that same way on camera to get your point across. You don't to change your personality someone you're not on camera also it was in my dug deep inside and said hey this is this is me this is who i am is when things started to move on so it wasn't really just I, like jonathan said it wasn't anything about except self-awareness realizing mm -hmm. wow you have something you could use just use it but put it in front of the camera mm, mm. gotcha no that's a great piece i think uh we obviously have to keep top of mind i was expecting hard skills of thinking like what we need to learn, but that higher level of authenticity is even more important because even all the hard skills in the world, if people can tell you're bullshitting or they're just not feeling your vibe, it's not going to be worth anything. So uh, definitely anybody and everybody that's starting that jump into content creation, um, the social media world, remember that piece of authenticity um, is really the keystone. I know you'll hear it over and over. Um, it's kind of another one of those cheesy cliche things, um, but you hear it over and over for a reason um, because it is truly successful. Um, so yeah, glad to hear that those skills expand to more of a meta level because um, yeah. this skill stack thing is really interesting uh, for all of us. I think we have, that's why we're here is because of our combination of skills and being able to find those synergy points um, among one another. So I'd love to hear from you guys, uh, Sam, what is something you've learned in the last year or so in this uh, social media realm, content creation realm that has just <laughs> amplified your, your output? Um, it really just helped you get things going on like uh, in a higher gear. Are there any skills or techniques you've stumbled into this last year or so? Yeah, I think like collabing with people is a great way to, you know, kind of get that started. I haven't done too many collaborations, but if I know somebody that is wanting to, you know, start creating content, it's it's more, I feel like it's a little bit more harder than it was like six months ago because it's it's becoming very flooded. Like LinkedIn's changing a lot of things. Um, so it's definitely harder than it was to get noticed at first. Um, so kind of some growth, uh, you know, some growth hacks is to start collabing with people. But for me personally, what I learned is just treating people like actual humans and, um, engaging with people. Like if people comment on your posts, like reply to them. If, um, you know, they are messaging you, obviously, aside from other things, um, you know, message back, message them back, like have calls with people, um, kind of grow relationships offline. 
that's the number one thing that's been helping me. And a lot of time when I open up about things and I stop, um, you know, doubting the whole, like you should only keep a certain image of yourself out there. Um, and you shouldn't really put on what's going on in your personal life in a sense, like obviously keep it, you know, keep it on track. But, um, every time I post a video like that, that's very heartfelt. It kind of describes what's been going on in my life. Um, I, I get, I get like opportunities for business. It's kind of funny because people said that you're not supposed to mix those two. Um, but people see that I'm, I'm real and I have actual issues that go on. Not everything's not just like, Hey, do this, like growth hack this. And, um, you know, I just added 15,000 connections on my, you know, whatever. Um, yeah. but that's, so that's, that's really what's been, um, with what I've learned in the last few years here or a year or so relationships are everything at the end of the day all these skills that we're we're tra tr trying to tap into even <laughs> when you master them become the best in the world you still need to have the relationships and the people to offer that those skills and that value to um so yeah no it seems this has uh been really interesting to see that a lot of this still even when you uh try to steer towards hard skills you still have to have humans and Mm -hmm. relationships and people underlying all of this um so would love to hear from you john is there anything in this last year or so um that has just shifted the game for you as far as either learning a new skill or a new technique or just something that clicked in this world um is there anything you can share with us or for the audience that would be a considerable upgrade or something worth investing themselves into? Okay, so I had never spoken on camera before December. I had just never edited a video before December. I literally picked up all these skills in the last six months. So to anybody that's on the fence or thinking about it, like literally you can go from zero to 20,000 in six months if you really want to. You know, I think that there is a, a certain level of talent, sure, you know, but I guarantee you can make a huge difference in six months. If you commit your life, if that becomes your, your main goal, your main objective to break through. And speaking of breaking through on LinkedIn, the biggest thing that I see is too many people try to break that glass ceiling with marshmallows. They try to break the glass ceiling with marshmallows. Their messages are soft. Their messages just kind of blend in with everybody else. It seems like everybody doesn't want to ruffle feathers. They don't want to, you know, take any chances. And again, it's a business platform. Your reputation's on the line. I get it. But the only way to break through is with a hammer. And you got to continue to hit that glass ceiling with hammer, with a hammer, and just keep going and going and going until you break through. But you're not going to do it with marshmallows. You have to mm -hmm. say something that's going to get people's attention to the point where they pay attention to you. Give them a reason to pay attention to you. Mm, love it again, man. Uh, the persistence and consistency uh, is the biggest recurring theme we see through from all, all these hustler, entrepreneurial visionaries. Um, so clearly there's, there's a common thread among uh, everyone with this consistency for people. Um, and I know that's been the biggest piece of the puzzle in my world. Um, consistency for for damn sure lots of times uh that's the same exact same exact content same exact strategy uh just needs a higher volume of of work and effort put into it sometimes it's not a magic pill um and so glad to hear that i want to mention that yeah there's this misconception that when when we say like you got to put in the work and you've got to be doing this every day that doesn't mean you have to post every day i think the confusion is is that you need to be constantly putting things out every single day in order for the world to see that you're busy in order for the world to see that you're constantly producing you're constantly creating it is perfectly fine once a week twice a week spend your entire week building up to that one thing or those, those two things and then posting it we don't have to, we have this habit of wanting to do everything in front of people, telling people about our plans, things that we, we want to do. Like for, like, I don't know about all of you, but to me, there's nothing that will kill your momentum faster than announcing to the world what you plan on doing. You know, 
I, again, it kind of goes back to the self-help books that we were talking about a little bit last week. But when people kind of announce it, they feel like that is taking action. And it actually kind of like kills your momentum a little bit because now it's out there. Now you have to do it as opposed to wanting to do it for yourself. You, you, it's like you need to announce it to give yourself that validation. I just I don't agree with that. So when it comes to it, it's like you don't need to be consistently creating content every single day to prove that you're doing something. You can make it super meaningful, work behind the scenes, build those one or two things, and it could be just as effective, if not more effective. Mm. Yeah, those yeah. are great tips to stay mindful of those goals. And I have heard the same thing in two sides of goal setting theory of announcing it for accountability and having people hold you accountable for it. And then there's the opposite side that you're mentioning, John, of announcing it like, I'm releasing a book. I'm writing a book. And then you did it. You get your like happy points because everybody thinks you're writing a book. And then nine months later, 12 months later, 15 <laughs> months later, there's no book. Um, so I have well, seen that. Here's my, uh, here's my counter argument sure. to that, Travis. What does it say about us if we need accountability? Yeah. Like this is not Alcoholics Anonymous. You know what I mean? Like this is social media. Like, if somebody needs to harp on me or remind me to do something, then that tells me I really don't want it. Yeah. And I, you know, because, again, like, considering the space that we work in, you know, so often people will say to me, you know, I'm motivated. I want this. I want that. These are my goals. And then they disappear in a couple of days. Mm -hmm. It is not my responsibility to make sure you do what you need to do. Like, you have to find that motivation within yourself. So I find that even in those scenarios, when you make that announcement, you know, even if it's for accountability purposes, like, do you really want that? Do you really want it? If it's somebody, if it's somebody I trust. So there's two, uh, two threads in this um, category of posting it on social media in general and having a trusted partner, a mentor, a family member somebody deeply involved in your life that cares for you mm -hmm. as much as you do in that sense, I value accountability mm -hmm. um, in the sense of so hoping somebody on social media cares enough about me to check in six months later and ask how my book's doing. Uh, definitely not the category I think that's valuable in. Um, but it is being again, right back to self-awareness of, is that the type of person of, do you need to have somebody else in, in that mix for you? Or are you the type of person that says, I'm getting this shit done by the end of the year, and then I'll announce it and launch it. So um, definitely important to keep, yeah, whatever, whatever works for you works for you. Um, and we'll definitely, uh, I think it's up to each individual to find what exactly that is. For sure. um, but we did mention um, we're starting to run out of time, but we did want to tap into the, the world of passive income or the theory of passive income. Um, I'm, I'm in the uh, perspective that technically passive income doesn't exist. Uh, I think it's just front loaded effort or front loaded investment. Um, but I know you guys have uh, some some stuff in the mix that actually generates passive income, and I would love to know anything that you guys actually want to throw in the mix um, for potential ideas. Excuse our third, our extra bonus guest in the mix this morning. <laughs> um, but I uh, would love to hear from you, Justin. What is your theory of passive income um uh, and is it is it a thing how do we pursue this whole world of passive income and making money while we're sleeping and all this um is it real is it realistic how do we approach that and if it's something we want to take care of our family with and do you know, I, I, I i definitely think you nailed it when you talked about front-loaded effort uh, as being the part of it because it is a lot of front-loaded effort however I, I what's better than knowing when you wake up you're gonna have a paycheck for something you've already done so I think it's, it's more that aspect, being able to know you're going to sleep and you know you have something coming in. That's when you buy the, uh, you know, assets. Are they appreciating or are they depreciating? You know, always buy appreciating assets because you have that value, like your house. I mean, if you think about owning a house, you live in your house for free, you're going to get that money back if you continue to pay the bill. So you're not losing money, you're just putting it somewhere else for the time being. And hopefully that asset 
appreciates in value because then you're making money just on your something you already own, something you're already doing. If you're paying rent, let's say $1,000 a month, and it's $12,000 a year, you're never seeing that money ever again. But if it's a mortgage, you're going to see that $12,000 again. So, you know, especially if you have rental properties, when people are living there, guess what? They're paying down that bill for you. So that's money you have. And God forbid mm. something happens to, you know, your job or anything else. You sell that, you get your money back as long as you're paying it, as long as it's an appreciating market. Now, I'm blessed I live in Texas from a standpoint of real estate. It's been seeming to, seeming to be the lowest of the nation for a long time. However, the highest upside because the market just keeps rising and rising and rising and rising and rising. So I'm big. I'm, I'm a big advocate on having a tangible, a tangible product as in a real estate. There's no more dirt in this earth. The dirt's gone. Like you have, if, if you buy dirt, it's yours. So that's the way I look at it. So that passive income, you're right. It's a lot of front loaded effort. However, it pays off a lot of long term why you're, you know, the make money while you're sleeping. Um, that you truly are. You're making your money back on your front, your hard work. And, and that's what it's about, right? I, it, it's great to make money on something you've already done. So then it's just, it's on easy. It's, it's, it's on, if you have an annuity, for example, and you've paid into it for 30 years and all of a sudden when you're 55, you start taking money out of it, you're making five grand a month for every month for the rest of your life, just on something you already did. It's just, it's just preparing a little better, I think. No, that's uh, the, the front end investment, I think, is a huge piece of the puzzle. A lot of people miss misunderstand in the in the world of passive income, like looking up all these passive income courses and everything. You need to have the knowledge or the capital on that right. front end or the time. A lot of times if you want to invest sweat equity, um, that's also a big piece of the puzzle uh, that has to be considered. Um, John, I'd be curious in your world, has this... How passive has your passive income been? Uh, is something I'd love to check in on. Um, what you need to do is you need to find a really great partner that you could just hand off those types of things to. Because for me, like, I need to be focused in what I'm doing. And if I have to do all of those other, like, I don't know about all you guys, but like, at least for me, like, when I, when I get really involved in something, I'm completely immersed in it. Like, I, put all my time into it. Like I basically live in my office. I really don't move out of here at, at any point throughout the day just to go to the gym or whatever. But point is, is that I, I don't do a lot other than what I'm doing in this world. So, you know, finding a great partner, you know, whether it's business partners or, you know, like an actual like relationship partner, uh, finding somebody that can support you in um, all of those things, in those other aspects, find somebody that can kind of uh, fulfill you in, in that regard. Because uh, when you're really focused and you've got a goal and you have something that you're shooting for, it becomes very difficult to manage those like passive revenue streams like Airbnbs mm -hmm. and rental properties and all of the above. So, so yeah, that'd be my advice. I know nothing about it. Like I remember when we bought a house, I didn't even I didn't even see the house. Like I saw pictures online and I was like, oh, okay, cool. That, that looks nice. And then that was it. I, I signed a couple papers. I knew nothing of it. I've never walked inside of it. I have no idea what it looks like. Like, I mean, I have an idea what it looks like. I've never felt inside of it, but yeah. Crazy. Wow. No, then it, I mean, it just goes to show you how many different, uh, different directions this whole <coughs> passive, passive income conversation can go. Um, but I think the big piece of the puzzle really that we're starting to see here is that it's, it's not as passive as you think. Um, it's always just mm. invest, investing the effort somewhere. And then obviously with the idea that hopefully that threshold inverts one day, um, of exactly. your now, you're now making more than, than it previously was. Um, so before we jump into things, is there anything on these, uh, this last passive income skill stacking, uh, career advice, um, that you guys wanted to give just as your best advice for somebody to secure their job, secure their personal and professional life. Can you go ahead and just drop the best advice that you got for our audience? And then we'll jump, we'll jump into our bonus round that I'm sure everybody here is waiting to see the shenanigans. Um, but Sam, <laughs> I will just start with you. If you've got a quick, uh, quick advice or anything, just what is the best advice you can offer for people to solidify their personal and professional life among all this craziness out here in the world <laughs> so you are the captain of your own ship you control your destiny 
Um, and I don't really like the term destiny because I believe that you're in control of it 100% of the time. Of course, there's things that we cannot control, but the way that we move forward is how we, our outcome. Um, so my advice is just to really, if you feel like you're in a type of situation where you don't see, you can't see the end of it, or you don't feel like you can grow, whether that be, I don't know, in a relationship, at a job, pretty much anything in life, um, it's time for you to, you know, move forward and to look out for yourself, number one. Um, and then, you know, just you're the captain of your own ship. So uh, you're in control of it. Brilliant. No, thank you, Sam. We appreciate having you here um, and appreciate you. your your insights as well. Um, Justin, would love to hear just the same thing for you. You've really, I think, created a awesome support net, I think, that uh, might be your, your primary net here in the next couple of years if things are played right. right. Um, what is the best advice you have for anybody trying to <clears throat> solidify or expand their personal and professional life? Uh, first and foremost, I'm not going to knock anybody's side hustle of multi-level marketing. However, it's very, very pie in the sky. Find, you know, and what I tell young people is, you know, I know everybody says, oh, I don't want to be a salesperson. I don't want to be a salesperson. Stop thinking salesperson. That's, you are, we're not mm. car salesmen anymore. Like, it's not the same. Mm. We're all salesmen. I don't care what line of work you're in. You're selling a boss. You're selling your employees. You're selling a product. So find something you can sell. Because you would literally get to write your own paycheck. And if you work real hard, you won't have to work real hard the rest of your life. If you work hard, especially when you have no kids, no bills, use that time mm. to put all your money away. And then buy real estate. They're not making any more real estate. And, I, and I'm telling everybody, multifamily properties, if you can ever find them and you can leverage other people's money. So pay your bills, get good credit, so you can leverage other people's money to buy real estate. So just find an actual product, an in-demand product that you can sell, not just... I mean, there's all sorts of them out there. You know, the potato supplements of the Idaho Hills farm that give it, you know, it's just, there's so many stupid scheme things, but sell a product that's in demand, save your money and buy real estate. If I'm, I'm telling my kids to do the same thing. Find a product you can sell and buy real estate because they're not making any more real mm. estate. Never going to leave. With you, man. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> dropping a few of those wisdom bombs here in the chat that's what these guys are here for uh john uh let's go ahead and hop to you here uh what is your final advice for anybody trying to expand their personal and professional career uh what do you have to say to them don't don't lower your prices and i see this a lot mm. i'll get a lot of Negative feedback. People say you're too expensive. Those prices are out of control. That's outrageous. Like something that we all have to remember is, is you're not paying for me, the person necessarily. You're paying for the person that through blood, sweat, tears, like had to go through this painstaking process to find the answers that now they're providing to you. You know, like the amount of hours that we had to commit to the training, to, to finding these things, to discovering the right way to do it. All of those things took a ton of hours. So while you may view it as, wow, that's really expensive, listen, go ahead. You can YouTube every single answer, and it'll take you 200 hours to figure out what I've figured out. You can put the 11 hours a day into LinkedIn, but I guarantee you're not going to want to do that. So mm. I would encourage people to stick to your guns. Don't lower your prices. Don't feel like you're not worth that price. You are worth it. And the right clients will inevitably reach you because the amount of time, effort, energy that you put into what you're doing, you are worth it. And I don't want anybody to feel like they have to lower their prices for somebody else. Mm, that's brilliant. No, this leads right back to that self-awareness, you guys. Um, so this has been a super awesome conversation. We're going to jump into the bonus round in a moment here. Um, so, Victor, on your end, if you want to load up that video while I go ahead and recap, essentially what we saw here today was self-awareness. This piece John just mentioned is where all of this starts. You need to look inside, discover what you want to do, what you can learn uh, to amplify. That's where that skill stack comes into play and who you can help with that skill stack. So if you can invest into learning sales, content, uh, 
and just general relationship building is what we're seeing, I think this is going to be a massive difference in your life um, as far as creating alternative streams of income that aren't relying on one job and one single career. Because unfortunately, I don't think we're going to see that anymore. Um, so appreciate all you guys for throwing in such excellent advice. Uh, let's go ahead and hop into our bonus round and we uh, can counterbalance all this intellectual wisdom with some pure shenanigans. Um, oh. We got a clip here. John lost our challenge last week, and uh. Uh, we have a clip of him. The, 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 the challenge was to pick up some dog shit with his bare hands, <laughs> and we're, we're going to see exactly what, what happened here, because this is extremely out of character. Um, for anybody that knows John, uh, the man is very clean, very well-dressed, <laughs> takes care of himself well, so... Very curious to see what the hell happened here. Uh, Victor, feel free to go ahead and play our uh, not-so-proud clip um, <laughs> for this this beautiful moment. How oh, is geez. it that dog shit ends up under your shoe, but when you're looking for it, you can't find it? Daddy, it's <laughs> All right, boys. We have our specimen right here. Okay, wait, 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 wait. What was what was the rule again? That I have to do it with bare hands? All right. Well, luckily for me, oh I have bare hands. <laughs> oh my god, so lame. Oh my Who god. the hell has yes. bare hands? Yeah, what? He the got f points for creativity. Yes. Yeah. Oh, what type of what on. type of stuff are you and your wife into, John? Oh, what do you have yeah, man. How do you, yeah, how do you got there? Furry gloves He's are got the uh, rather for convenient. It. That's not even a real turd. That's too perp. Oh, oh yeah, he's not right now. I knew there was something off about that turd. It was way too perfectly shaped. <laughs> Double whammy. Yeah, wasn't sure. All right. Well played, John. Well played, John. Uh, so there's some of our shenanigans from last week. Uh, that was what our, our loser from the Wheel of Unfortunate had to do. Um, so let's go ahead and... Uh, We've got our resident uh, Vanna White style uh, host down in Texas. What do you got for us on the Wheel of Misfortune this week, Justin? All right. So, so we got four choices today. We got four selections. We, we have the antique slap, which is where a partner throws uh, baby powder or talcum powder in your face uh, or throws some water, then some powder, and then slaps the crap out of you. Um, that's one option. We have the cereal, the dog food cereal, which we're going to pour dog food in a bowl and proceed to eat it like Cocoa Puffs. And then we also have the hot pepper challenge, which is where we get one of these super, super hot peppers and decide to just eat them. And then we also have drinking straight cow's milk. It's been brought to my attention that not everybody has cows in their backyard like I do. So if you can go to some health food store, I imagine these weird stores now will sell raw cow's milk and you have to drink it. Oh. Okay. No funny business, John. There's no asterisk. There's no uh, toco puffs in the dog food bowl like it's we're, we're really doing it all right so here we go oh my god this is for the challenge please this is for the be, challenge this is for, please don't be this is for the challenge wait hold on that doesn't count i hit myself okay right. here we go here we go oh my god all right oh my god oh my god it's cow's milk no <laughs> what? no all right here we go Chase no me. there better be no funny business okay <laughs> Say, I know, I know. Travis will do it. He looks like he, his, he looks like you have to do it like we, you think it is. There's no technicalities and say, oh, I did. I read the small print. And get by. You have to do it. All right, here we go. So, so here we go. 
Oh my God! Please no, be Jonathan. No, Please no, be Jonathan. No, no, Jonathan! No. Oh my God! For that. You deserve that. You deserve that. All right, all right. <laughs> I do. I do. And I expect you to do the shape of the udder. I'm talking. Get up in there. Double fist. Double fist it. You know whatever you gotta do. And drink that cow's milk. <laughs> I'll make it up. Oh my God. Oh boy. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we've done it again. 50 <laughs> minutes of intellectual wisdom topped with five minutes <laughs> of and against to really just counterbalance uh, and probably it all. So <laughs> thank oh you so much God. for the awesome support. Um, we're going to be go ahead and, and we'll uh, be rocking and rolling. We might have some formatting updates for you guys pretty soon here. Um, but uh, thank you so much. We've got so much in store for you. Appreciate your support. Um, Victor, if you want to go ahead and nail our outro, um, thank you so much, everybody. We'll see you next week. It's madness, I tell you. And it feels so good.